Hey everyone, Joe here. In today's Lightroom retouching tutorial, I want to show you how I retouch high key photos. Now these are some uh, color photos that I retouched and also I add a little bit of texture to the background when I got done. So we'll be getting this photo here from this photo here. So let's hop in here and get started. Okay, let's take the photo that we're going to be editing and let's open that one into the develop module. Okay, as you can see here, we got a very high contrasty uh, photo. It's a color photo, basically shot on a white background. Now, if you watched my recent video uh, in regards to a vlog we took where me and Rose took these photos, I kind of explained that high key doesn't mean white background. High key is something, uh, well, not something. <laughs> it's a photo in which there are no deep, dark shadows. It's very low contrast, you know, for at least the most part. And you never have any blacks clipping. And most of everything in the histogram is shifted more towards the whites. And as we go through this photo editing it, that's what I'll be bringing up everything up to. And you'll see that it comes in a nice high key color photo. Then at the end, you know, this white background, yeah, it really isn't all that interesting. I'll show you how I go uh, into Photoshop and add textures to the background and kind of blend them in and make them look really nice. So let's get started over here. Now, if you watched in my other videos and stuff, you know, the first things I like to do is go down and turn on my lens corrections. So let's go ahead and click on remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. Okay, as we can see here, my Canon EF 35mm f2 IS lens was detected. Okay, wonderful. Now, since this is a very high key image, I do want to go over here to the magenta side and pull this up to something like a plus five, just to kind of make sure, unlike any kind of these areas through here, we don't have any kind of like magenta or anything coming out, any kind of chromatic aberration. So kind of eliminate that. And while we're right here, well, we might as well go ahead and do some sharpening. So I already have a preset made and we'll go over here and I'm going to use one of my sharpening presets. And if you haven't downloaded my presets yet, you know, do check down the description below. You can download this preset plus all of these or just about all of these you see listed here, you know, completely free. So go ahead and click on sharpening, double click on that one. And we'll go over here and we can see that is automatically applied. Noise reduction also is at 10. And that's everything we need to be done. Now this sharpening is a sharpening of 50, a radius of 0 0.9, so very small radius, and a detail of 75 and a masking of 50, which that should work pretty good. We press the Alt key and grab our slider here, or Option key on the Mac, and you can see what areas our sharpening is being applied, and that looks really good. So we're good to go there. All right. Now let's go back up to the top here. Now, I've already got this cropped in, but let me go ahead and show you. I have it set to like an 8 by 10 because I wanted to crop this in. I really liked the way it had uh, my previous edits cropped, and I want to get it exact. So I already went ahead and just kind of copied that crop over. I wanted to show you this anyway. I said I got it cropped to 8 by 10 which I think works really nice for this picker image. And the white balance here is off. So we need to do some uh, white balance adjustments. Now, uh, this photo is kind of, well, it doesn't look just too great. I want to adjust the white balance here to a 5650. That should warm it up just a pinch, which puts the colors right where they should be. And just almost, anyway. Then I'm going to go ahead and put a plus 10 for the temperature. I mean, not, you know, the tint, excuse me, not the temp. And I think that pretty much nails it perfect. And that's what I had previously on a white balance card when I had my white balance set. Mm. So now this is high key. So well, one of the things I am going to do here automatically right off the bat is go ahead and bring my white, ba uh, not white, my exposure up. Let's brighten this image up some more. And you can see here I put up you know, a little half a stop here in the exposure. And that brightened it up quite a bit, which is what we needed here. Now, if we look up here in the histogram, we still have a lot of areas over here to the blacks we don't want. And we have a couple of things that might be kind of overblown a little bit. Most of the area that's overblown is the whites. 
because you can see in the part of the histogram here that the reds at skin tones that's what you really want to watch out for at least in portraits is never have those actually break over into this area too much if not you'll have blown out areas and then to show you that's the area that's overexposed right there but that's perfectly fine okay so we got that done now let's go down here and uh, let's do our highlight shadows whites and blacks and this is a pretty easy one here i am going to bring up my highlights a plus 10. now you're probably saying plus 10 joe yes <laughs> that's because the highlights work on the face here you can see that brightens up the face and plus 10 is where we want those for this now the shadows we're going to bring those down just a little bit. Now, shadows normally do work with the hair and some other areas. You see, we bring up the shadows too much. Oh, that doesn't look too good. So, I'm going to bring down the shadows to a negative 10. And if you can't get it just right, I'll just punch it in right there automatically. And there we go. Now, the whites here. I'm going to bring up my whites quite a bit here to really brighten it up. Not that much. Still like a plus. I think I had around 30 last time. Yeah. Plus 31 is close enough. And the blacks. I think, yeah, I'm bringing those blacks up just a little bit. No? No, I'm going to leave the blacks just where they are. Excuse me on that one. So, that's starting to look pretty good. Now, you can see there's still a lot of dark areas here. We can't have that. But we'll get to that here in a minute. Now, I am going to reduce the clarity. Negative 33 on the clarity here. That is a little extreme for some people. I understand that. But that's, I do like a low clarity when doing portraits because it makes the skin stuff look very soft. And it doesn't uh, have any kind of harsh feeling to the overall image. Now the vibrance here, I'm going to pull up, say, about a plus 10 or 12. To kind of bring out just a little bit of the color and stuff. And, of course, the, the saturation. I think I had it up around the yeah, plus 6. I think it's about right now normally i wouldn't bring up the vibrance that high especially on a portrait so if anybody's ever watched other videos they know i normally don't bring it up that high but this particular image doesn't have a lot of colors in it that the vibrance would normally affect and this is to kind of bring out a little bit of the lips and stuff and that's really the only reason i brought it up that much now here's well the all important part of getting this image to look really good is and that's the tone curve so let's zoom in here to the tone curve, and hopefully I won't have any mouse issues. So I'm going to bring up the tone curve here to about a, um, the blacks over here. This is the blacks, this in over here is the whites. I'm going to bring that up to a plus, uh, well, just 5.1%. Now I'm going to create another uh, dot. Now you can simply just uh, take your mouse, click on there, and boom, there's a dot. Now if the dot isn't exactly where you want it, well, we can move it. There's no big uh, deal whatsoever. So I'm going to take that one, and I'm going to pull it down just a little bit. I think I had it on like a 23.5 by 23. So, yeah, the 23.1 is close enough. And it puts a little bit of bend in that tone curve. Now, if you're not too sure what I'm doing for, I'll actually turn the tone curve on and off, and i show the effect of having uh, the adjustment and not having the adjustment as soon as we get done. Okay. So... Now I want to bring up the tone curve here on this side over here. Just a little bit. I think I had it about right here. Which is like a 71 point uh, yeah, let's see here. About 75. That's close enough. Maybe it's a bit. Right. Yeah, that's close enough. And this one I left at 100, 100. Now let me zoom back out here right quick. And we can see before and after. And before and after. So if I you know, zoomed in over here, you know, zoom out here. Pull these hairs around. And you can kind of take a look at the hair and stuff as I go, you know, turn that on. It lightens them up. Gives it more of a matte look, but you can also see it pulls out a lot of the dark shadows in the hair, which is essential for a high key. So we don't have anything too dark, which we have now. In addition, when I cut that on, take a look at the histogram up here now. 
it pulled a lot of stuff off those blacks, and we got most of our stuff now shifted up towards the white end. So, yeah, that works pretty good. Okay. Zoom back out here now. Now we got that done. Let's go down here to bottom. We're not doing any kind of uh, HSL or split toning in this photo. Everything's very neutral here. Not adjusting any of the colors. And there isn't a lot of colors in this photo to adjust anyway. So we go down here now. I am going to add just a little bit of a vignette. Just a negative 12. And for the feather, I'm going to go about like a 66 here. But I am going to change this over to, I think I had it on paint overlay. And that is to kind of, you know, kind of darken in so we don't have any of those overexposed areas on the far side. And see if I can take a look at our histogram up here. You know, I'll cut this off again. Zoom into the histogram. That's with it off. And then with me doing that simple overlay, we can see, boom, we knocked off that really bright edge we had in there. But we still got everything shifted more up towards the, hi uh, the highlight ends of the histogram. So now our photo isn't overly you know, bugging our eyes out which I think works pretty decent here. Now that we got that done, we're going to go in here and add our own little special, you know, post uh, crop vignetting that we can create ourselves. Now let's take the circular filter we got here. In case you're wondering, that's right here. And let's go ahead and see if I can't just clear everything out so we can create a new one here. I think we just click on effects and clear everything out as well. Okay, so we got a filter here. Now, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we'll do a contrast, something right off of negative 33, 32. So something like that's pretty close. Negative 32 is good. Then we're going to pull our, what's here, here, contrast. Oh, yeah, our shadows. Got to pull our shadows up too. About the same amount. That 34 is close enough. And our whites are going to pull up about half of that, something around 15, 16. And our blacks, I'm going to pull up just a little bit too, something like 8, 9, or 10, somewhere in that area. Now, one thing we want to make sure here, make sure invert mask is unchecked. If not, it will affect the center of everything. So, I know, let me zoom out here right quick, because I can't hardly see nothing zoomed in that much. And I am going to draw out this huge overly sized gradient circle. And you see here. And if you, I need to make it a little bit bigger, so I'm going to actually pull it down a little bit, pull the top, spread it back out. Then I'm going to center the center up of it where I want. Now, notice the face here as I'm moving this filter around. And remember where I put that center is going to be the darker spot, but everything else is going to be much brighter, like the hair and stuff. So I want to put that center spot I'm going to somewhere, I think, around our chin here. Or maybe just around the lips. And I think that looks pretty decent there. So that, you know, really helps out quite a bit. You know, gives everything that very nice high key. So I'll go ahead and click Done. And of course, I'll zoom back in. As you can see, the hair and stuff now is much brighter. Everything around the top of here is much brighter. And that little brightening, you know, effect worked quite nice. Really helps flatten that image out some more while not making the entire image flat. That way it gives you some still some, you know, some kind of focal point to look at it, you know. Because if you, everything in the image is perfectly flat, then your eyes won't want to center towards anything. This way you can still have a high key, but your eyes are still want to center towards the center part of the image. Okay, now to get that done, well, we got to do some facial cleaning up here. Not a whole lot here, but there's a few things we want to get rid of. A few, a few uh, spots in the hair. This is mostly where light was shining through, but I don't want it to show up in the final image. And we'll just get rid of some dry skin. So let me just take care of this right quick, and I'll probably fast forward through pretty much most of the video here until we get done.
Okay, we got down all the spots done. Let's kind of just fill the frame a little bit here. That way we can get more just ahead. Okay, let's grab our brush tool here. Now we got that done. Now I want to go down here and find my portrait uh, brush here. That is softened skin. And I'm going to use mild because this skin is already very nice. You know, Rose got wonderful skin. And I'm just going to kind of just smooth it up. Now this is not to really take away texture. This is how we're to kind of flatten out shadows and give you more of that high key look. You know, a real nice soft portrait without losing detail. Anybody says, are we going to lose detail doing this? No, this is not to lose detail whatsoever. There is still plenty of detail in this skin. Now, if you don't see detail in this skin, then that's just all because of YouTube's compression algorithm. Once we got that one done, let's go ahead and do our eye detail. Click on new again. And let's click on up here to the top. So eye detail basic. And of course, make our brush smaller. Just kind of go with those a little bit because flash photography does wash out a lot of the details around the eyes when it comes to makeup. Okay. Done on that one. Now I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more here to one to one. Like I said, still plenty of detail on this, even at one to one. Now I'm gonna grab my eye white tool. Just the basic one here, just kind of brighten up the eyes. Take a little bit of redness out. Wonderful. I think that's pretty much got that. Let's click new again, but this time I want to grab circular filter again. And I want to kind of go over those eyes a little bit. Now I'll click on invert mask to make sure that is checked. So we are affecting stuff inside that circle. In addition, I want to go down to find iris enhance basic. This is a very basic you know, one here, not too uh, much. Like I said, all these presets are in my presets uh, downloads. So if you download those, you get all these. So I don't have to keep explaining each one of them in every tutorial. But there isn't much to this. And this is kind of a clarity of plus 10, a saturation of plus 66, and an exposure bump of one stop. That's pretty much it. It's just enough to bring out you know, the uh, color in the eyes just a little bit. Very subtle, but subtle is what we work with here. We don't want things to be too you know noticeable and we'll go down here also to go down to let me see if i can't find your know, portrait lips basic again another one it just kind of adds a little extra gloss to the lips here to make the uh, lips nice and healthy a little bit of color you know and that also is in my you know presets so do check those down at the bottom the presets are completely free so let's zoom back out and let's take a look at it Actually, I gotta zoom it back out some more to fill the screen. And that's looking done for the most part. Like I said, at the beginning of this video, I wanted to add a background to the white and I want to show people how I do that. Now, I may not do it the most perfect way possible, but it comes out well enough. So now I got the portrait part of this done. Let's go ahead and go back into our library here, take the photo that we want to edit. And let's go edit in Adobe Photoshop CC. And we'll let Photoshop CC come up right quick. Okay, wonderful. That's loaded up. So let's now grab the texture that I want to be using. So let's just kind of minimize this right quick because the texture I keep over here as well. Now these are not my textures, so I can't just give these out. But... I will eventually be trying to create my own, which I can't create them. I just haven't bothered to yet. So here's the texture I got. It's kind of a rough, you know, uh, what do you call it? Plaster style background. Let's take this one. I'm going to go ahead and send it over to edit in Photoshop as well. Yeah. Good. Now when it comes up like that, I just go ahead and I go to duplicate layer. 
and go over here and I can find, oh, there's my DNG file. And just copy it over to that area. Then as soon as I get that done, I go ahead and just close that TIFF one. Don't save it. And there it is on this area. Now don't worry about it being, you know, smaller. We'll just go ahead and click our little tool over here. Let me just kind of make Photoshop large for once. That we don't get anything mixed up between it and Lightroom. We'll go over here and grab this tool right here, little dual arrows. And you can also check, you know, show uh, transform controls. We do want that. Now we want to just grab these and kind of like pull them up. Just a little bit over the top of our image here. And when that's done, go up here in this little check mark at the top. Put that done. And we're good to go. Now we go ahead and hide it right quick. And just take a look. Bring it back. Now what I want to do to this, I want to soften this up. Because if somebody's standing in front of the background, well, we're not going to see that. We're not going to see it whatsoever. And because uh, it's going to be you're very, very soft and you're going to see all the full texture. So what I want to do is I'm going to go up here to like filter. And I believe it was blur. Yeah, then just, where is it? Blur gallery. Fill blur. Here we go. And I'll go over here to the top. It says fill blur. I want to reduce this down to like, maybe say like 10 pixels. And I think, yeah, that works pretty good. 10 pixels on it. And when we get done, just go ahead and click OK up here. And let it do this calculation stuff. And I'll go, go ahead and uncheck that transform tool. Now what I want to do is I'm actually going to go down here and uh, actually I'm going to go kind, change this layer here to uh, probably darken or multiply. Yeah, there we go. Darken or multiply. We'll just have to see which one I think looks best. Normally we put it on multiply. And then just drop the opacity down to where you get just a little bit of the background in the back. Now, the thing is, if I pull it back up, you still see a lot of that's getting on to her. And we're going to fix that. Don't worry about that. Let's just drop it down to 50% right now just for purposes of working. Now, let's click on our bottom background here, our original background. That would be the picture of Rose. And we're going to grab our another little tool over here. It's a little magical wand. Just click on it, okay? And we'll just click in there, and I think that got most everything. And you see here, then we just click back on the background, and there's this nice little button down here. That is a, shows a little rectangle with a circle in it. Click on that, and that will mask most everything out. Now, it's not perfect, and there are some ways you can refine this to make it much nicer, Except I'm not really going to go into all that because I just don't mess with it enough to care. But let me see here. Let me just, we got our blacks here. And I'll zoom in over here to the side. As you can see, it made a nice little uh, silhouette. And anything that's in black is automatically completely transparent. Anything white is letting this, uh, this layer show. Let me get that out correctly. All right. Back on the farm here. We're going to take the white and we're going to brush on this part. And that's going to let our layer stand on. Zoom here. Just kind of brush that over. And brush it over here too. Now if I zoom in on the image here. You pull down here. Pull this over. We can kind of work around some of the edges and stuff here. In case some edges might not come through. Pull that up, especially when we get to all the hair and stuff. Yeah, see how the hair comes through right there? I'm just kind of brush over that just lightly. Now, the brush I'm using here is like a 90, hardness of 20. You know, this is what I'm using right now, opacity of 100. And just kind of brush over the hair a little bit. That let some of that show through because it's kind of, you know, it's really fake on that masking, especially like here in the top. And you won't see none of that texture detail in the hair. Anyway, it'll actually make the image look more natural. 
So let me brush that in. Do do do. Zoom on down here. Make sure we take a good look at the edge here. Make sure there ain't nothing like haloed looking. Like for example, this in here. Let's make that brush a little bit smaller. Kind of getting there. And also around the fingers here. It looks very halo looking. Kind of brush on the very edge. Oh, that looks a little too much. Control Z. Let's try this again. See, so change this opacity on this brush. Actually, I'm gonna bring the opacity back up when I'm gonna bring down the flow. Try that. There we go. And maybe that won't be too bad. Look through here. Yeah, that look more natural. I'm gonna zoom back out and zoom in. And that looks pretty good, that looks like it's done. So now we just go to File, and click Save, and then save it back into Lightroom. Well, okay everybody. Well, here's our final image back in Lightroom. As you see, the, the background looks fairly soft, looks pretty decent, and I think it looks pretty nice. Now, like I said, the background is really something optional that you may or may not want to do it. Some people do like it because it gives you that way you don't have such a boring looking background. But anyway, that's it for this tutorial. If you like this tutorial, you found it helpful. How about give me a thumbs up? Thumbs up is always highly appreciated. And if you're not a subscriber to my channel yet, you know, please take time to subscribe. Subscribing is free. It's for you and let you know when I release more videos. Until next time, everyone. Thank you for watching.